go. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Elevate Your Leadership. We are so excited to be here with you today. My name is Paul Croto, and I'm here with the gorgeous Cheryl Morley. Thank you so much, Paul. <laughs> well, I got a lot of blue going on there today, Cheryl. Do you like? I do have a lot. I guess I could change my backdrop. Yeah, you might need to go like black or something. It's like we got a okay, lot. Okay, hold blue. on. Here it comes. Get ready. Oh, boom! Is that good? That just happened. Okay, there you go. Very, very cool. So Cheryl, today we're continuing our series with the 15 Laws of Growth by John Maxwell. Great book. So make sure if you're following along with us, you go and get the book because it's uh, unbelievable. And what we're doing, Cheryl, is we're teaching people how to grow themselves and what it yes. takes to grow, which is like if there's a book you read before you read any other book in the world, it's this one because it teaches you how to read the rest of them and how to get value from them. And today's law, I was just I'm blown away by it. It's, it's, it's so, so great. It's called the law of the mirror and the right. law oh. of the mirror. Yeah. I want to do one thing really quick first. Okay. So um, we had an earlier call, like at the beginning of the week and everybody set an intention for what they wanted to get out of that call. And I would love for you all to do that again, because I had a lot of really positive feedback on that. So set your intention today for what you want to get out of this class before we even do the class. You already know it's about a mirror, but set the intention for what you'd like to get out of this or what you would like to let go, right? So what in your heart would you like to get rid of? What are the things in your life you'd like to get rid of? But what are some other things that you'd like to learn today? Maybe something that's been on um, in your mind or on your heart lately, but just be thinking about that. Put that out there and just make sure that you have an, an intention for this class today. Okay, Paul, I'm turning it back over to you. Well, Cheryl, the law number three, uh, the law of the mirror states that you must see value in yourself mm. to add value to yourself. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So I have a question for you, Cheryl. Yeah. What do you see when you look in the mirror? Uh, well, I see a smart, capable woman who is on a mission to help people not only get healthy, but help people really elevate their entire life, like every single part of their life. Okay, now it's everyone else's turn. That's an A-plus answer. What do you see when you look in the mirror? And I love that question, Paul, because I will tell you that I have not always been able to answer like that. That was, a, I was very shocked at your answer on that because that was, we have that recorded, thank God, because um, <laughs> <laughs> that is not the answer you would have given uh, a couple of years ago. Even. Well, I'm glad you said a couple of years. We might have even said a couple of months. Well, I didn't want to. I didn't want to go crazy. Oh, hey, I don't care. I think it's super important to let everybody know we're all on a journey, right? We are all on a journey to um, be better. And why do we want to do that? Like my whole thing is, or to elevate. We can say elevate because I love elevate. But we are all on a journey to do that. But why is that, right? It, and that's something that I ask myself. Um, all the time like why do i want to do that who even cares like so what i could just yeah. like oh everything's good everything's fine i mean i'm yeah. i'm breathing right i mean i know sometimes we think like that i'm breathing i'm good but i really believe that i for one and everybody on this call i think every single person wants to become better so that they can help others become better i really believe that in whatever way that person chooses, right? But I really believe that. Well, I do too, Cheryl. But, and I, I think some people have a challenge with this question um, because I feel like we're taught growing up that we need to be humble, which is true. We all need to be, we can't just walk around saying how great we are to the whole world, you know, but there's a fine line between coming off conceited and that I'm all that and, and a bag of chips and having low self self value, you know, and this is, this isn't what you're saying out in public. And I realize we're in public at the moment because there's other people around. This is what you're saying to yourself. When you look in the mirror, you were you to you, that's gotta be outrageously awesome. 
you are a rock star. You're the best person in the whole world. I mean, all these, these are the type of things you should be saying when you see yourself in the mirror. Not like, oh, I'm okay. You know, I'm okay. I don't know. I do want to tell Stephanie, congratulations, because I think it is incredible to be at the point where you don't even want to look at yourself in the mirror, right? You don't even want to look at yourself. I've been there. I promise you. But now, you know, since you have that awareness, you're like, hey, let's look at, let's look in the mirror. Let's say some nice things. Let's realize, let's realize how great we are, right? Each of us, each of us have fantastic things um, within us and that we're doing and that we've done. And I think to realize that and to know that and to remember those things. I think it's so important. So congratulations, Stephanie. You're an awesome person. Yeah, it's a great, great point. But we all we all come out and we say things about ourselves, like I'm not enough. Or, I'm not good enough to do that. And what that really is just saying is that I don't see much value in myself, which to me is crazy. Because so we talk about on our mindset calls on Mondays, we've talked about your worldview. Life is blank. So a lot of people say life is unfair. Life is this life. You know, they have all these different negative connotations to life. And, and I don't know exactly where I get this from, but I've always had this positive attitude towards life and to other people that I see all of you as tens. You're, you're extremely valuable. So my, but my opinion of you that I think you're a value of 10 Cheryl, I think you're a value of 10. I've always thought that. Moment I met you, value 10. But it doesn't matter what I think about you. It matters what you think about you. But I just, I'm, I'm, and Cheryl and I have had hours of conversation on this. I don't, I can't see how people don't look at themselves as a value of 10 or other people. Everyone is a value of 10 because that's just, that's just how my mind and how my vision works and and how I'm wired. And I realize that everyone isn't wired that way, but boy, I'd love to get across to you today that you're a value of 10. I mean, we're not talking about how beautiful you are or how smart you are or how, what your leadership lit is. We're talking about, are you valuable? And, and that is completely up to you to come up with a number. So right now, put in a number in this chat, where you think you are on a scale from 10 as far as value? One to 10. Yep. Everyone should be putting in a 10, like rapidly here. You have to start seeing yourself the way, because that's the truth. But whatever you num whatever number you put in there, that's reality. So... I know this might be a big change for a lot of you in that, wow, I never really thought of myself, like what, how value am I, valuable am I? Um, it's elevate you. Thank you. I'm trying to get other people in this call, so sorry. Good, 10, 10, claiming it, awesome. Great job, Becca. I, so, I love that you guys are putting that because that is fascinating to me. Yeah, so awesome. Now, as John mentioned, doing the 21 Laws of Leadership, your leadership lid determines how good your team's going to be. So if your leadership lid's at a six, you can't have a 17. It's impossible. So that is what controls how well of a leader or how big and successful your team is, is your leadership ability. We're not talking about that today but it goes along the same lines because whatever you see yourself as value, you'll never grow above that. So if you're like, man, I'm just not a, I'm not a much value to the world. Like I'm a two. Well, then you're only going to put two into this, this personal growth thing. You'll never grow above a two because that's how you see yourself. But if you see yourself as a 10, then you're going to start growing. You have the ability to grow that level. And I'm telling you, in my opinion, Cheryl, I, we, you know, I love these calls because 
there's two opinions and people get to hear two sides, a male and a female. But I just, I believe you need, everyone needs to start looking themselves as a 10 right now, because I, I a thousand percent feel that it's exactly what they are as a 10. Great. How do you feel about that? Well, I feel like that I didn't look at myself as a 10 until like a couple of weeks ago. So I find it absolutely wonderful that all of you guys are looking at yourself as 10s or as 8s. I mean, I couldn't get over a 5, right? I mean, and I was I was But you struggling. didn't go from a 5 to a 10 in 2 weeks. No, I didn't. I went from you a 5 to You were always a 10. No, you you I just went, couldn't see it. Well, that's right. And and I think that's super important to say. I mean, all of us are tens, right? That's what Paul's saying. All of us are tens. But do you really feel like that when you look in the mirror? I mean, right. do you really feel like I'm a 10? Yep. You understand, Cheryl, you just be, didn't be just become a 10 this year or, or last year. You were a 10 all along. No, but I do believe that I that I thought I wasn't. And then I thought I was in the in a split second. Right. Which is very about interesting awareness, yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that is a big, that's the big lesson here is that if you see yourself as a five, you're never going to grow above a five. That's, that's how, that's your growth lid. It's as, as good as you can grow. So you right. have to start changing your self image. We talk a lot about identity. I'm obsessed with, this is my, like my new word for 2021 is identity and, and, and changing that. So whatever you say to yourself your mind looks for things to back that up. So explain it to us, Cheryl. What, what exactly do you mean by that? Well, what I mean is, is that if you're telling yourself that you are, let's just say you say, I'm not smart, then your mind will go out and look for every reason that it can possibly come up with from everything that's happened in your past to make you right. So, and, and it can come up with anything. So if I, if you say I am brilliant, I am super smart, your mind will do the same exact thing. It will go out and look for every single reason and every single thing that's happened in your life to make you right. So I just find that so fascinating. And I don't think I understood to the point that it works, but it is no joke. Whatever you're telling yourself, whatever you say to yourself, if you say to yourself, I'm this, or I'm that, or I'm ugly, or I'm fat, or I'm whatever, your mind will go out and find every single thing that it can possibly find to make your statement correct. Yeah. And I just, I find that so fascinating. And here's the other thing. I think sometimes we're not even aware that we're saying it to ourselves. And even if you're not saying it out loud, if you're thinking it, it's the same thing. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think people, um, they, they see themselves as, um, or they, they say things to themselves and they don't really realize how, like you said, how bad they really are. But whatever you say to yourself, your mind looks for things to back it up. And I think the best analogy, Cheryl, that we've used in the past is the Google. So just go pretend, not pretend, your mind works exactly like Google. Whatever you type in the search bar there, and then you hit enter, it's gonna pull up stuff that relates to that, like Cheryl just said. So if you pull, put in your search engine, I can't lose weight, it will search things that say I can't lose weight and come up with all kinds of articles and stuff about how it's impossible to lose weight. But if you type in the search engine, I'm super thin, it's also going to come up with a whole bunch of ways to become thin and how easy it is to become thin. So it, it just depends on what you're typing into the search engine. And we type things into our search engine 60,000 times a day. So we really, and we're going to talk about this, how to change and how to grow your self image and guarding your self talk. But that is, that is absolutely step number one is you got to watch what you're saying. And I, Joe and I had a conversation earlier today and I, and, and years ago, this wasn't recent, but years ago, she would say, um, would you say Cheryl that that that's so stupid or no I'd say I'm stupid Sh yes oh Cheryl you're so stupid yeah she would say, say it I'm out loud to herself in yeah, front of all me. the time yeah. all the time yeah and I hated that you know, like I just like Cheryl because like, uh. <laughs> you you're she's 
she's programming that and her mind goes and looks for things that will back up because we've all done stupid things in our lives. I mean, I got a, I got a whole closet full of stupid things I've done that I can pull out right now. So there's no problem in our mind finding stupid things we've done in the past. So of course it's going to back that up. But now Cheryl's new saying is I'm brilliant. And there's also a closet full of things that backs up that as well. And we can all find those things. So I love that analogy so much that, uh, that Google, uh, you type in there. So uh, let's talk about um, uh, changing your self-image or things that we say. So in, in this whole thing about images, or I'm sorry, identity, is I'm the type of person who blank. You know, I'm the type of person who loves to exercise. It's just who I am. I love it. Now, people say, well, I'm, I'm not like that, Paul. It's not who I am. I hate exercise. <laughs> well, you could change that. You could say, I'm the type of person who loves exercise. You write that a couple hundred times a day. Eventually, you're like, your subconscious mind will catch on and say, hey, maybe I am the type of person who loves exercise. Maybe I should give it a try, at least. And then you try it and you like it. And, and that's how change is done. It's done through bombardment of the mind. So I love the neural tools from Deb. I love subliminal recordings. I listened to my whole life. Cheryl and I are doing something a little bit new now that we're, we'll be telling you about. Um, but it's all about getting to your subconscious mind and changing those things deep down inside of you. But you've got to get to a place where you have a couple dozen of these statements written out that I'm the type of person who blank. I'm the type of person who's a five-star. That's just who I am. I'm not a four-star kind of person. I'm not a three-star kind of person. I'm a five-star kind of guy. And, that, and whether that was true or not makes no difference. It's how I see myself. And how we see ourselves is who we become. So it, it's not a matter of whether this is true or false. It's a matter of how you see it. And there's, there's, there's dumb things I've done in my life and I'm like, that, was, that wasn't me. People are like, well, well, who was it then? Because it certainly looked like you that was doing it. Granted, I did it, but that wasn't me. That's not who I am. And there's a difference between that. So I'm the type of person who sees themselves as a 10. I'm the type of person that sees everyone else as a 10 also. It's just who I am. But if you can't see yourself as a 10, how in the world are you going to see anyone else as a 10? It's just impossible. So it's super important to, to this whole thing about looking in the mirror. So Cheryl, there's three main lessons that, that are in this chapter here. The first main lesson is it's impossible to consistently behave in a way that is inconsistent with how we see ourselves. Yes, that's absolutely right. If you see yourself one way, that's the way you're going to act. That's the way you're, that is how your whole life will be. But the minute, and, and the thing that I think is so interesting, you guys, is it can happen in one second. It doesn't take forever. You don't have to, oh, well, I see myself. You can see yourself as a five right now. And in this quick, you can see yourself as a 10. I mean, really see yourself as a 10. And it takes some awareness on why, why do I think I'm a five? If you're not a 10, there's a reason why. And the reason is from your past. It's not from anything that's happening right this minute. It's from your past, which was one minute ago or beyond. Or right? 30 years ago, yeah. Exactly. Or when you were five, right? So all of these things, but as soon as you realize what that is, then you can fix it. And that is the whole point. That is what every single person will have to do because most people are struggling with things or a story that they're telling themselves from the past. Or, right? and, yeah, but usually those stories get started by somebody else saying something to you. Of course. Um, I mean, there was times I was told by coaches of mine that I would never amount to anything. You know, now, when you say something like that to this type of person, they probably said it on purpose because they know that I would go over and beyond to prove them wrong. And I, and I, I think, Cheryl, the best way to get you, you, you to do something would be to say, you can't do it. Right. Because now you're on a mission to 
<laughs> to prove them wrong. Sure. Yeah. That's the way my brain works. That is absolutely yeah, just right. How, it's just who you are. Yeah. Right. But I think it's so important. So just, just be very clear that however you see yourself, that is how you are going to consistently act and be. Right. So that's why it's so important to make sure that you see yourself as a 10. Yes. Second big point that, that uh, is in this chapter here is how we see ourselves determines how we invest in ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely correct. If you don't think you're worth anything, why would you spend any time trying if you're, to- If your car is a two, why are you going to put 10 parts into it? Yeah. Why are you going to try to make it a 10 if it's yeah, a two? Is, that's stupid. <laughs> So the same thing, if you think you're a two, you are never going to put anything good into yourself because it's not worth it. And I think that's important too about the, um, the lid, right? I mean, that's part of it. If you don't oh. put, you know, if you aren't putting anything into yourself, then you will never be, you know, if you think you're a three, you'll never put any, anything into yourself to become more than a three. Right. So Cheryl and I, we spend tens of thousands of dollars on personal growth stuff with Deb Erickson, Tony Robbins, Brennan Burchard, all these people I'm hiring and Cheryl's hiring to help us with personal growth, growing ourselves. Well, why would anyone spend that much money on themselves? Well, because we see ourselves as a value of 10. So we're, we want to put 10 value in. We want to invest our, in ourselves at a super high level. And you only invest in yourself at whatever level you think you're worth. So it's this, this concept of seeing yourself as a 10 value is super, super important. But so, I think it's never been more important to me to invest in myself and so that I can be there to train and help other people. That's why I want to do it. Because to me, it's not easy. It's very hard to do all of these different things and figure out why I'm doing this, why I'm doing that to, you know, even to feel things. I don't really feel like I want to feel very many feelings myself. I'd rather just feel all good stuff and have a wonderful heyday and fun and go on vacation. But that's really not what it's about. And that's not how any of us, I believe, feel really fulfilled. It's how we can make ourselves better so that we can help the people on our teams as health coaches become better. Right. So it's worth it to me to do all these things to help other people. Absolutely. So the third point is that our belief in ourselves influences the belief that others have in us. Mm -hmm. mm, that's interesting. Yeah, not really. It's really not interesting because people really do know how you feel about yourself and they can they can tell they can just tell any of the clients that you have, any of the health coaches on your team, they know how you feel about, about yourself just by spending a few minutes with you, right? Just like we know where they're at by spending a few minutes with them. It's the same exact thing. It goes both ways, right? And I think that's so important because if we are not at a 10 ourselves, then people are not going to be as willing to listen, to follow, or to, um, you know, to be in a community with us. Absolutely. And Chill, I do feel like, again, people will struggle with this because of this whole thing about being humble and not talking about ourselves in a good light. And, and, you know, I'm awesome. I'm this, I'm that, you know, but I've just throughout my life. And I just have always felt that I was worth it and that I had value. Well, I don't know, Paul, that's a very interesting question, only because that's one of the biggest things that I struggle with. Like, honestly, nobody even knows anything that I do or what I've done or the things I've, the people that I've helped, because I never talk about it, because I feel like I don't want to be bragging about myself. But the problem with that is, is that what about the people who would listen to me if they knew the things that I had done or if they felt like, oh my gosh, she seems like somebody who's gone from Taco Bell to something a little more going on than the Taco Bell 
manager trainee program. So maybe I would like to follow her and find out how um, how she did what she did or, you know, how maybe I can become part of that community. But instead, I haven't said one word because I don't want people to think that I'm bragging. Right. And so it's yeah. a very for me, it's a very fine line and it's a very um, I don't know. It's hard. That's all. It's just it's hard for me to decide. Sure. But it it, it gets you know back to your belief in yourself, you know, that how. How certain are you that you can do it? And I just, before I even read the book, it's all figure outable. For some reason, I had that attitude in life. And I felt like no matter what it was in front of me, I could, I didn't say I could figure it out, but I could do it. And, and even if I'd never done it before. Right. So it, it just comes from, from an attitude, you know, and that's, that's all it is, is there was very, it wasn't like, well, Paul, you've done all these other great things. So of course you can do this too. That wasn't like well it all the time. Right. Well, and I think that's true. And I do have the same attitude. I believe that you do, but I'm not, I, I've, I've really struggled with going out and telling everyone that. So I think something that's really helped me in the last little bit is whenever I have the attitude of, do I think 1000% that I can help that person elevate their life and be better? And if the answer is yes, then I will stop at nothing to let them know that I'm the person that can help them because I feel like so many people are lost today and so many people have nowhere to turn, nowhere. They do not know where to turn for any of the things that we have to offer, absolutely. And I'm sure more things that we haven't even thought of. So I think it's super important to make sure that, yes, we understand that we're a 10, but that we're willing to, you know, have the, or I guess have the knowledge that you can help every single person that you come across, you can help them elevate their life and help them be better and be, you know, and help them have the life that they want to have. Yeah, I, I agree hundred percent. And I, and I don't think this is all about verbal expression no. of how great I am or that it's right. more the nonverbal. You can just feel that Cheryl yeah. believes in herself, whether whatever she says, doesn't matter. So you can, and you can feel that with anybody, like how much does this person believe in themselves? And I just heard a really interesting quote at the leadership conference uh, from Ed Maylett that um, it doesn't matter if people believe in you or not. All that matters is if they believe you believe what you're saying. So yeah, it doesn't matter if people believe what you're saying. What matters is if do they believe that you believe in what you're saying? And I thought that was super interesting. I think it's absolutely true though. It is. And you guys can, and you guys can think about that too, as you're out talking to clients or talking to brand new health coaches. Do you really believe what you're saying is true? And people and they're can asking tell. themselves that. Does this person oh. believe what there's, because they... They have no idea whether 90 for life works or any of this stuff works. They've never even tried it. Right. But they're asking themselves, does this person really believe that of what they're saying? So that's super, super interesting. So Cheryl, let's jump right into the, the meat of things here because we, we've, I think we've established that um, seeing yourself as valuable is important. Um, but how do we grow our, our self-image? And maybe this isn't a one second thing for some of you you know, in that you just go from a five to a 10 and realize that you're, you're valuable. So how, what are some things we can do that would help grow our self-image, help grow our identity? And what's number one, Cheryl? Well, the first one is um, you really have to guard your self-talk. So what you are saying to yourself really does matter, right? And it is the most important conversation that you're having every day. And by the way, with yourself, everyone yeah. has a conversation with themselves. And John, remember John Maxwell said, oh, and if you don't, then that's a problem too. So you need to really go get some help if you're not having a conversation with yourself. So we all do. And it is the most important conversation. How many conversations do you have a day with yourself, Cheryl? Are you kidding? It's ongoing. It is absolutely constant. And the thing that I think is so funny, no, but the thing I think is so funny is that, think about this, you guys. Do you sometimes talk to yourself in a way that you would never, 
ever talk to someone like that, right? Yeah. Of course. And so you really have to guard against that because your, I'm telling you, your mind will make you right, <laughs> you know, whatever. So you have to make sure that you're the type of person who sees yourself as a 10 and that is just who you are. And, and I like to put in the words, I see myself as, as having great worth. So I like to actually say the words instead of just saying a 10. Because a 10 to me is a little different, I guess. I thought of it as, anyway, Bo Derek is a 10. Um, now that's really aging me. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's like the first thing that I thought of. And I'm like, no, I want to say actual self-worth because it is something completely different, right? It's what's on the inside. But anyway, so, and then Paul, you say C because you wrote that. Yeah, so... With my Tony, Tony Robbins training, we he doesn't believe in affirmations. He believes in incantations because it doesn't matter what you say. It's what you feel that matters. Yeah. So he says his affirmations in a way that is extremely unusual. And for those of you that have watched the documentary, I'm Not Your Guru, which, by the way, we're going to send out a link because there's a special Facebook event this Saturday. It's 3 p.m. Eastern. Everyone's invited to it. We probably will do our own Zoom right afterwards. It's a huge Tony Robbins event that's coming out with the, with the five-year celebration of that documentary that I just happened to watch the other day again. And um, during that, he explains this power of incantation that he literally walks around screaming in incantation all the time, especially the first hour of his day. I mean, screaming it so that it's not just him saying the words, but it's him feeling like this is real. So like, and, and, and it's, it's a mission statement. So it's not, I mean, we, we could sit here and, and write 20 pages out about ourselves and who we are and we wouldn't cover it all. So you got to get it down to one sentence. What is the one sentence that describes your mission statement? So, and it starts off. So it's, it's I and your name. So I, Paul you Croto. You can't do it. Mm -hmm. Oh, please now. Woo. Okay, go ahead, Paul. So I, Paul Croto, see, feel, and know. So I have to see it. I can see it. I can feel it. And I don't just think it. I know it. So remember, there, there's different levels of belief. The highest level of belief is knowing or absolute certainty. It's not like I, 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 oh, I kind of believe that. No, I know it. Now, is that what you think? No, that's not what I think. That's what I know. So it's the highest level you can get to. So I, Paul Croto, see, feel, and, and know that I'm elevating my life every day in every way. Now, when I scream that for an hour a day, sooner or later throughout my life, I'm going to start believing that. And crazy things happen throughout the day where this great thing happened, that great, my life's getting better and better and better. Why? Because that's where, where focus goes, energy flows. So all of my focus is on elevating. Go, it's got to get 1% better. I got to go 1% better than I was yesterday. The only person I'm competing against is myself. And not, and more specifically, the Paul Croto from yesterday is who I'm competing against. I got to get 1% better than I was yesterday in every area of my life. So um, I'm elevating my life every day in every way. Everything in my life is getting better and better and better. It's just unbelievable to be me. And that's just the attitude I carry through life. And it's amazing the attitude you carry through life is, is what ends up happening. I mean, thoughts become things. That's what Bob, Bob Proctor teaches us. So I encourage you to come up with your own incantation, your own mission statement. I would highly suggest copying mine because I've thought long and hard about the best one you could possibly say. And I truly believe that, as Cheryl mentioned, life is about growth. Because if you're growing... If you're elevating, you're making progress. If you're making progress, you're happy. And that is all that matters at the end of the day is, are you happy? And there's only one way to true happiness, and that's progress. And there's only one way to progress, and that's being obsessed with elevating, getting things to go up 1% a day. And that's, you know, Cheryl started off the call by asking, what is your intention for today? My intention every single day is to improve 1%. I wanna be, whatever my leadership was yesterday, I want to be 1% better than I was yesterday in my leadership. And I, by doing these calls, I feel like it's 
It's not just going up 1%, it's going up 10 or 20%. It's just amazing growth we're having here, uh, especially here on Thursdays. What's number two, Cheryl, on how we can grow a self-image? Number two is you add value to others. And I love this one, right? So guard your self-talk. So make sure that you are guarding that. And then the second one is to add value to others. Now you will find yourself when you lose yourself in adding value to others. Sounds a bit like a Bible. Bible. Yeah, I was like, I, I kind of heard that before someplace. Right? Um, I was like, oh, that sounds very familiar. Yeah. So it's so. How true is that, Cheryl? Oh, well, it's, well, it's the reason why we're here, right? Yeah, it's everything. Yeah, it's the reason why we're here. Yeah, you'll find because if you feel lost, it's because you're not contributing. So the whole thing is number one: need growth. You got to grow. But why are we growing? So we can contribute. That's where the the fulfillment comes in. All the fulfillment right. is how much have you contributed to other people's lives? That's the that's where the that's where the game's at. Yep. So number three, number three I love. Do the right thing, even when it's the hard thing. Yeah. So I'm willing to say the things I'm good at and the things I'm not good at. And um, this one is one of those things where I, I struggle. I do okay, but I struggle with this here. You struggle doing the right thing, Paul? Don't tell us. Let's move on to number four. <laughs> Depends on what the right, the right thing is. The problem is the definition of the right thing. Okay, stop it. The right thing is the right thing. And no, it's not. It's here. very no, objective. No, here. no, no, <laughs> no. Okay, no, we're not getting into this. All right, number four. Every day, get a win. That is super important. And listen to this, never. Okay, so the way that we're all going to get a win, we were, Paul and I were talking, we're trying to think of a, the best way that every single one of us can get an absolute win every single day. And this is how we're gonna do it. Never, and I mean never, miss a day of taking your 90 essential nutrients. So that's how every single one of us can get a win every day, right? Yeah, we all have to show up for something. You know, I mean, that we talk about making your bed in the morning, which isn't really gonna help you in, in life. Let's take lot. our 90. But taking the... 90 for life. Like, I don't know anything better named than that. 90 <laughs> for how long? That's right. Like, life. now, no, wait, we, we could make it one step better if we said 90 for life every day. Like, like, uh, like, uh, Karen just put in there. Well, look at, look at, uh, Jill. She just said she hasn't missed one day in seven years. Join the party, sis. That is well, awesome. Look at her. You can, you can tell. Fantastic. You can tell. Super. She's the picture of health. Absolutely. I mean, you can't fake this. When you're doing it seven days a week, 365, it shows. Yeah. And over time, you're, it, it's, it shows tremendously. I mean, I can be 10 feet away from someone who's nutrient deficient and just see it in their face. I can see it everywhere. I was just with my niece. I have to listen to this. I was with my niece yesterday and I'm sitting in the car and these two people walk by us and I said, oh, my land, I wish I could get out and talk to them. They need their 90. And my niece in the back seat goes, what? And I go, oh yeah, that's how I do it. Every time I look at someone, I decide if they're taking their 90 or not. And because it just like puts me in the mindset of, oh my gosh, I've got to make sure that I'm getting better so that I can help them, right? I mean, that's just the way it is. And she said, that is so interesting. I'm like, yeah, you should become a health coach. <laughs> yeah, we, when we say 90, we don't mean 89. No. We don't mean 88 because that's not going to help you. It is 90, there's 90 essential nutrients that your body cannot make, therefore you must get them. So that's what our whole mission is. That is the thing that's going to prove to you that you can do, be consistent with something, is that I'm taking my supplements every single day. Yeah, build self-confidence. Cheryl, what okay. is the next one? Number five. Let, wait, I'm not, I'm, not st I'm not sitting, I'm standing, so take, take it easy here, okay? I don't know, Paul, maybe you should do this one. <laughs> Oh no, there's a reason why I have you do this one. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, so number five is be prepared. Okay, mm. so yeah, that is super important. And I love the little um, story that, um, that John told and he um, talked about how he kept trying to make a, a seven foot putt 
and he kept missing and missing and missing and missing. And so then um, he told, and he was with Jack Nicholas and he's like, well, you do it. And so Jack's like, oh, okay. So he steps up and of course hits it in the very No, first no, time. John said, make sure you keep your head down. Oh yeah. He's yeah. John said, make sure you keep your head down. And so he did it and he hit the ball in and he said, well, I can just tell you right now, Jack, that uh, what that tells us is that I am a better coach than you are. I am a better trainer than you are. And he laughed and it was funny, but then he said, so how did you make that? Like, was, you know, what, why? And he said, and he said, listen, I have made this seven foot putt 10,000 times. That's why he can make it every time. It doesn't even matter. He doesn't even have to think about it. He just walks up and puts it in. Right. And I just find that so fascinating because once we do something that many times, right, we become an expert at it. Yeah. People feel like I'm not really that good of a health coach. I'm not sure what to do or say or whatever. Listen, call us after you do 10,000 health evaluations. Yes. Then, you know, you can, you'll, you, you'll have a different attitude because you'll be the best in the whole world. So it's, it's about doing the numbers. And that's what it's all about is doing 10,000 of something in life. They get super good at something. And I think, I don't think I know health evaluations are the number one thing you can do because you're changing people's lives and you're opening the door to an, inc an incredible career possibly for them. Yeah. What is number six, Cheryl? Well, it's, it may be my favorite out of all of them. Okay. So use your mirror to look at yourself and not at others. So do usually not what we do with a mirror. What? It's usually what we do with a mirror is to look at ourselves, you know, so. No, I think a lot of times we don't look at ourselves. Okay. Do, okay. So first of all, I just want to say something about this. So you can look at it a couple of different ways, but I think a lot of times um, the biggest thing that we do is we compare ourselves to others, right? So we don't, we aren't even, instead of looking at ourselves because sometimes we don't like what we see, well, at least I'm better than so-and-so well, at least I'm doing this and, you know, or, you know, whatever. We say whatever we say as we're looking in the mirror, right? So it's super important to um, look at ourselves and not um, at others, right? So do not be too concerned about what others think of you, but be very concerned about what you think of yourself. Yeah. Super, that is super, super important. True. Yeah. Do yeah. not be too concerned about what others think of you. I don't care what other people think, but be very concerned about what you think about you. And because if that you think of yourself as having great worth or great value, I promise you that your life will change, right? Your life will change in a way that you can't even imagine because you will be there for other people who are on the same journey as us, right? We're all on the same journey. I really believe that, Paul. Oh, we are, absolutely. But this is just so important because what, there's so many people I'm sure out there right now be like, this Paul and Cheryl combo doesn't know what they're talking about. Now, how much value do you think Cheryl and I give to that comment? Precisely. Zero. We couldn't give. Well, I think it's funny because care. I don't, Paul, I don't think there's anyone out there. Saying well, if they do, they don't know anything. They're stupid. Well, because you, of our like, vision, when we look in the mirror, about? we see it. Oh, what I was, was like, what? There's nobody out there that thinks we don't add value. We are value. Listen, we are here to help other people, right? Look That's up value in the here. dictionary. Yeah, like, you'll see a picture of us there. Yes, but let me say something else, Paul, that I love that really made a huge difference in the way um, that I, it, it made me realize a lot of different things about myself. When um, John talked about, we see others not as they are, we see others as we are. And I will give you guys a perfect example of this. So. There's a certain way that I like to be, we'll talk about in the gym because that's, that's easier. So, but it, it goes in my whole life. This is how I am. I love a coach that screams in my face. 
I love a coach that screams at me and move and I mean, just screams and yells and it gets me so fired up and I'm like a thousand times better if I have a coach like that in every area of my life. So I honestly believed that that is what everybody likes. And I must say, uh, I lost a few people early on because they, they don't like that. And what I've come to realize is that there's not a lot of people who like that training, that way of training and that way of coaching. In fact, there's many less than I thought. But what I realized, and just right now, is that I thought that people, I thought that everyone was like me and, oh, well, I love that. And I, you know, I like to be pushed and pushed hard and I like all that stuff. But I think that it's super important to realize that each of us do that, right? We see people how we are, not how they are. Yeah. And then you can see in the comments here, people say, I don't like that. <laughs> well, so here's Listen, the thing though. I don't even have to look in the comments. If you come at, if you, if you had Cheryl on your team, which you probably want Cheryl on your team, you're going to come across that nobody likes that. And by having that, you're going to lose the real big winners in life because the real big winners love that Marine boot camp screaming at each other thing. And Cheryl, I need, I just realized I need to scream at you more. That's the whole problem. No, I don't need you screaming at me. I have a coach. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. But that's interesting, Paul. So the last thing you wrote, I I find that very interesting. In the notes. Yeah. And we, you know, we talked about it. So you can't give a compliment to somebody else. Oh. Unless you have, if you believe that about yourself. So you can't say to someone else, you're good looking. They're beautiful. You can't say that unless you think you're beautiful or good looking. It's impossible or, to give a, you know, and Joe, I know you, you struggled your whole life with giving compliments away. Oh, uh, struggled. I just would never give one. Right. Because I didn't feel, because I felt like it made me less when I gave someone a compliment, it made me feel less than, but in, in reality, it's the exact opposite. It makes you, it builds you up, right? We build our, we build each other up with compliments and kindness and love and all of those things. And so I really want to, and and think about that. Is it easy for you to give a compliment, any compliment at all, right? And it, for me, it was, I had to start on um, things that I felt like I was good at then I could give a compliment with those things. But if I felt um, not good enough in that area, or I felt like I didn't, you know, like I wasn't pretty, or I felt like whatever, whatever it was, whatever it was, I could not give a compliment in that area. And so I really want you guys to, to think about, so, well, I guess what I'm saying is, is if you said you're a 10, or if you feel like you're a 10, you should be able to give a compliment in every area of everything, right? Because you feel fantastic about yourself. You know your worth. You know um, how great you are in all these different things, right? So you should be able to give a compliment. So think about that. If you can give a compliment now, readily give a compliment. Now, that's how Paul built his whole business. He's super good at giving compliments. And that's how, and and believe me, the doors open when you give a compliment. You will always have a friend anywhere you go if you can learn how to compliment people on anything, right? And it might have to start with, oh my gosh, you have a beautiful purse or whatever it is, right? And so I just want you to think about that, that if you're great at compliments, then you can say, or this is how I do it. I'm really good at any compliment now. I don't really care. And I love to give compliments. Um, And so I feel, and I feel like that. I really believe because I, I truly believe that it builds you up also at the same time. Oh yeah, absolutely. But I always, I'm very sincere when I'm giving a compliment because I got to look for something that is true in the other person. And I don't just say, um, you look beautiful today, but I would say with Cheryl, if I'm giving a compliment to her that something specific, like I love your hair today, it looks so good. Um, 
you know, or I love your, your necklace or something along those lines that, and, and, and so you, the more specific you get in that, so that they can have something like Cheryl said to back that up because everyone um, is always looking, well, is that true? Or what, what is that? What does that mean? And, and uh, um, so I know Cheryl, when, 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 when I told you you're brilliant and super smart, you didn't quite buy into that until I gave you some examples of why that is. And that made all the difference in the world. Right. That is true. It gets, it that gets is the, true. The buy -in. Yeah. yeah. And then, well, and then I took it one step farther because I'm like, well, why didn't I ever think that before? If that is the truth, then why didn't I think that? And come to find out, right. You have to get that clarity on where that's coming from and why you're feeling like that. And it was kindergarten, right? I mean, that's when, that's when it all started. And I think all of us have things like that. Yeah. That we need to deal with. Absolutely. So bottom line is we all, Cheryl and I want you to see yourself as a 10 value, that you are valuable. And when you start seeing yourself as that, and it literally, I believe it takes one second to do that. Um, and, but do these other things too, because all these things will help you solidify that fact that you are a 10 value. And once you get there, your whole life changes because now you can actually grow. Now you can actually give compliments to other people. You can do a whole, a whole world opens up to you once you see yourself, see your value at 10. So anybody got a comment about that? We have a few minutes left. We'd love to hear from people and that caught something caught their attention or they like to make a comment on something. Hi, Debbie. Unmute. Are you trying? Okay. There you go. <laughs> you know, I read this book, oh, I don't know, over a year ago. And I love this this chapter when I reread it. It's like, this really stuck. <laughs> yeah. It, it, you know, it, it, it was this chapter that really, you know, made things, you know, change in me back then. And now that I reread it, I'm thinking, I'm going to have my son read this book. Yeah. So because he's in college and everyone has a little bit of doubt and it's going to help him get through that doubt. So thank yeah. You. Do you see yourself as a value of 10? Oh yeah. Yes. Outstanding. Yeah. Great, great, great. Yeah. This is, you know, we talk, we share and I talk all the time about this isn't just for us. It's about our children too, you know, and, and how much justice and Angelica see Cheryl and all she does and that she does have value 10 for herself. So it's made both of them have value 10 for themselves too. And that it's okay to have that. Because I do think that there's people who are brought up with the, again, the, the, the thought that I need to be humble or I need to be, look at myself as a two and then I'm not better than anybody else. No, this has nothing to do with anybody else. It's just has to do with your value. So, well, and, and you can't be humble, but just be proud of yourself too. You sure. Know? Well, and I think that it also depends on how your parents acted. So let's keep that in mind too, because oh, yeah. I was constantly reminded that we don't talk about ourselves and we don't do ever do that. And, you know, anyway, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff like that, that you may not even know subconsciously you have, and you are dealing with. Sure. I definitely was. And some of the stuff that we know we're really proud of, we kind of tend to forget about. And, um, you know, <laughs> my son being an Eagle Scout and a black belt, gee, remember those things? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, so just remember. But, you know, but, I, but I do think, again, that um, we, 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 are, we, we, we never want to look at, I never look at myself as being more valuable than somebody else. Like, I'll never mm -hmm. be like, well, I'm more valuable than that person because. I look at everybody as a 10. So I think that's, that's a, it's a universal feeling that I'm not better than anybody else. And that, and well, that's, should your, be anyway. that's your humbleness there, you know, but it's not saying that I'm a two. No. I still think I'm a 10. I'm perfect. But I also think everyone else is a 10 too. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really the, your perspective of how you look at things. And, it is. It value. is all about how you look at things. Yeah. And how you value others. Yes. Super Thank great. You, Thank Debbie. you for your input, Debbie. Is there anybody else that wants to mention? Karen. Yes, there's Karen. Oh. Karen's got her hand up. Well, hello. Hi. <laughs> As I always appreciate both of you. Thank you. I love this group. Um, 
it just continues to grow me, even as a coach, as a certified holistic coach and a certified purpose development coach, it continues to grow me. Um, I like to say that, yes, we all have value. And one thing my parents did say is when you speak about yourself, you should speak highly of yourself, but you shouldn't do it in a boastful way because we are fearfully and wonderfully made and we need to believe that. Even when things are going bad, you need to believe that. I'm in a, I'm in a, not a stock mode, but I'm in a mode where I am growing myself for whatever's to come in 2022, God willing, because he's preparing me, he's planning things within me that I could never, ever believe that he would do. My team will grow, it's growing, it's going to grow, it has grown, I'm growing, and I'm going to continue to do that believe that we have to speak self positive talk we have to do that you know i'm preparing for a coaching brush for my other clients on saturday and i'm hoping and praying that they will come along on the other side on the health coach side so they can see that it's not just the mind that you have to be healthy in it's your body it's your physical it's your emotional it's your spiritual that you have to be helpful you know it's just god has doing he's doing just amazing things for me and I'm just so grateful for it because I'm being introduced to different people, collaborating with other people. And I just know this is his plan. And I just have to stay on course and not fall off. And I'm not going to. You know, Tom mentioned today about longevity. I grew in longevity. I'm going to grow in longevity. And I'm going to continue to grow in longevity. And I'm going to bring others on for it. So, yes, you are valuable. Yes, you should compliment yourself as well as others. I, I did a post yesterday regarding compliment. Can I read it real quick? I'm just hype. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> Let's hear it. You're fantastic. <laughs> compliments. We all need more compliments in our lives. We need to get in the habit of complimenting our families, friends, and even strangers. We also need to hear them as well, even when we give them to ourselves. It should be positive self-talk. Sometimes we have difficulty, which I saw somebody put in the chat, accepting a compliment. Why? Because we don't think we deserve to be complimented. Today, let's change that way of thinking and be receptive. Start with the belief that you are beautiful, dazzling, absolutely fabulous. Whenever someone compliments you, just accept it, smile, and say thank you. Be abundant with your compliments to others. Complimenting with sincerity, like Paul said, um, can penetrate and soothe the most troubled soul. So cultivate a habit of giving at least one compliment a day to someone else, as well as yourself, and know that by doing this, you will feel good when you do, and it will become a habit. Remember, words can hurt, but then words can also heal. Compliment yourself every day. You guys are amazing, outstanding, wow. and I love you. Well, we Beautiful. love you, and I know where I'm going to steal all my Facebook posts from now on. I'm just going to go to your Beautiful. wall and do a copy paste on that. I'm going to start posting. I'm only, I only do Instagram, so I'm going to have to go over to Facebook. Okay, yeah. I know where to get them now. That was <laughs> beautiful. Awesome. Thank you. And, and and who here believes that Karen believes what she's saying? Oh yeah. Yeah, you know, you can feel it. Yep. So well, Paul, we've got time for one more person, Jill. Hi, I uh, have a mission statement I thought I'd share with you. Um, it's not really, uh, it's too long to do in an incantation like you were suggesting. Long I'd time. have to at least take the first half of it if I was gonna do that. And I'll admit that, cause I've been really crazy busy with the move that I've gotten away from it. And so I, I'm not gonna be able to give it to you from my memory today, but um, I will commit to getting back to that. Um, effective immediately. So um, it feels simply incredible to be a person of influence, empowering more than 10,000 people to achieve optimal health, wealth, and time freedom, which gives my family the liberty of living financially free while earning more than $1.2 million annually in my longevity business before December 2023 and opening a holistic wellness center at the beach while answering God's call and living a life of purpose, elevating the lives of others. Wow, that's beautiful. 
Now you can see that if Jill, Jill reads it every day and it, it just gets into her subconscious mind and becomes who she is. So that is and beautiful. I, and, and definitely um, we're going to hold you accountable to reading that every day. And, and, uh, and I had it memorized and I did do it every day, uh, but I have, I have not been. And uh, so I definitely going to get back to it. Awesome. 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 Okay, everybody, that is our call for today. I hope you got some value out of this and that you look at yourself as having a value of yeah. that. With that, um, Charlie, anything you want to say to, to close the call? Um, just that Paul and I look at each of you as a value of 10. And please, 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 if you do not continue on working on yourself and working on that, because it really will change your life. Absolutely. All right, everyone, have a wonderful weekend. We will see you on Monday at Mindset Monday. And until then, let's unmute the lines and have everyone say goodbye. We love you. Thank 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 you.